Hello and welcome to our presentation. This is Tell Me More Lies, Technical Means for Exploiting LiDAR and Mobile Systems, presented by Hawk Cyber Solutions, Capital Technology University, and APS Global. This is our squad. Uh, my name is Brett. I'm the CEO of Hawk Cyber Solutions. With us, we have Shuja, Hawk Cyber COO, Cyrus, the CIO of Hawk Cyber Solutions, Elijah, the CTO of Hawk Cyber Solutions, and Professor Rick Hansen of Capital Technology University and C CEO of APS Global. And I would like to add, he's never been con convicted. A little bit about us. We met Rick Hansen May 2019 due to a fateful encounter during a Booz Allen Hamilton's Hacker Trivia Night at Jailbreak Brewing Company. From there, we worked on LiDAR, presented at DEF CON 27, hacked Navy ships, done REN team assessments, and we'll do many more projects and research. The presentation we shared in the DEF CON 27 Car Hacking Village and Drone Wars Village focused on passive OSI layer one, non-traditional and low tech obfuscation. LiDAR devices are used in autonomous vehicles, drones, phones, and aircraft, which we will discuss later on in this presentation. LiDAR works in a similar way to radar and sonar by using light waves. It calculates how long it takes for the light to hit an object or surface and reflect back to the scanner. LiDAR systems can fire as many, many as 1 million pulses per second and creates a virtual map in memory that is processed by an AI machine learning system. The AI machine learning system trusts that the LiDAR is providing an accurate map of the world. In the images to the right, uh, you can see us using the device, detecting uh, things in the room around us. Uh, in the photo on the bottom left, you can see Professor Rick Hansen guiding uh, our friend through the hallway and seeing how the LiDAR device is able to detect him. In the picture on the bottom right, you can see uh, our friend laying on the ground and the LiDAR device uh, is detecting him at it is, is getting a weak signal or either not detecting him because he's blending in with the floor. These are our previous findings. Uh, for example, powders dispensed in front of vehicles or drone or drones can block the view of objects and people. Uh, we can also hide objects that would damage or destroy vehicles. Plastic sheets or bags with the proper color and coating can reduce reflected light. On the bottom left is an image of Elijah throwing confetti in front of the vehicle with the LiDAR sensor, creating a visible wall on, on the LiDAR, which would possibly stop a vehicle from moving. The second image to the left shows Rick inside of a trash bag. As the car approaches, he is not visible or barely visible to the LiDAR due to the reflective coating on the bag. If the civilian was wearing a trash bag to protect from the rain, a vehicle using LiDAR could be a potential threat if the device did not detect the, the person. In the image on the bottom right, I'm holding a box with the bottom side of the CDs facing the LiDAR device. The bottom side of the CD absorbs the infrared lasers from the LiDAR, leaving the surface area of the box around the LiDAR visible and the CDs remain invisible or nearly invisible. Shuja will be presenting the next few slides. Why that's relevant. In the last couple of years, we've seen a rise in autonomous vehicles, aircraft, and drones. Uh, and like Brett said, cars and drones are now using LiDAR, which uses infrared lasers to generate a 3D a point cloud that lets the vehicle see a digital representation of its surroundings. LiDAR is being used in cars, drones, planes, phones, and it's even making its way into being used in satellites to understand global climate and how it might be changing. Here's Professor Hansen explaining LiDAR in more detail. LiDAR is really a neat tool. It's all around us. It's been used in everything from a space shuttle to consumer drones to automobiles, and now it's even being used to spot clear air turbulence around us. Sensors cost anywhere from a couple of thousand dollars on up, and they're an incredible value for what they give you. 
The reason why LiDAR is growing so much in popularity is because the point cloud vis visualization technology used with LiDAR is very effective for mapping the terrain, and this technology could be the next big thing in a large-scale vehicle automation. Drones are being equipped with LiDAR to scan accident scenes. For example, a scene of accident on a highway can easily be mapped by deploying a LiDAR-equipped device. This ex saves precious time and money by freeing up traffic and less expenditure of accidental personnel. The drones can also be used to model the train, which could be hard to do manually, and they provide significant savings over ground survey methods. Here's an audio clip from Professor Hansen. LiDAR is expected to become part of the National Aerospace System, which is the collection of all traf air traffic flying around the United States. There will be Amazon delivering packages, who knows, even pizza deliveries. It's a great place for bad actors to get involved and either cause chaos or perhaps hijack your delivery for their own use. LiDAR is also being used on planes now. A LiDAR sensor can be mounted on board an aircraft and the aircraft travels the train at slow speeds of around 60 meters per second. And during the flight, the LiDAR sensor pulses a high frequency laser beam towards the Earth. And the sensor records the time difference between the pulses of the laser beam and the return of the reflected laser beam to the aircraft. And these elevations are combined with digital aerial photography to produce a digital model of the Earth. Let's listen to what Professor Hansen has to say about the use of LiDAR in aircrafts. Whether the LiDAR is being used for navigation, mapping, uh, finding clear air turbulence, there are a number of standard cybersecurity techniques which can be used to defeat it or to bend it to other purposes. This includes replay attacks where it can, you can show it a scene that it's seen before instead of what's really there. You can do denial of service, preventing it from providing navigational data, and on and on through the hacker's toolkit. Boeing is currently testing LiDAR to help pilots avoid clear air turbulence. Here's another clip from Professor Hansen explaining some of the more potential attacks that can be used against a LiDAR system. Clear air turbulence is an example of a nasty hazard to flying. LiDAR has great promise in detecting it and allowing pilots to avoid it. Someone with access to the data bus could, for example, perform a replay attack, either showing clear air turbulence where none was there, or showing clear skies when there's a nasty hazard ahead. All of us as cybersecurity professionals should think about this. If we put our skills to work, we can prevent very bad people from doing very bad things. What we are doing or would like to be doing. Our next step is to intercept the data going between the LiDAR device and the serial bus modulator and decode the UDP packets. After de decoding the UDP packets, we plan on performing denial of service attacks and replay attacks against the device. Using publicly available sources, we were able to break down the UDP packets and extrapolate the data blocks within the packets. We plan on using Python to decode the data blocks and modify the data that is being fed to the device to generate the 3D point cloud. Cyrus is going to talk about how we decoded the UDP packets. Hello, I'm Cyrus, and I'll talk about the breakdown of the UDP packets. This is the packet data information provided by the manufacturer's device that we used in our research. The data shows how the device's network packets is structured in a UDP transport format. This is the network packet tree of a similar device. Even though this is a different type of sensor, the packet data for this device is identical to the one showed in the slide above. It has the same, same amount of bytes. It's easier to use when decoding network packets. After we have intercepted a couple of data packets, we have labeled one of the raw packets for easier reading and understanding. I will now take it to Brett for him to explain the breakdown and the labeling of the packet. Using the charts in the previous slides from the manufacturer, we created a hex dump of the first pair of 12 firing data blocks in dual return mode and highlighted the hexadecimal values and provided descriptions. Highlighted in yellow is the 42-byte header, 
Highlighted in green is the two byte flag or laser block ID. Highlighted in light blue is the two byte azimuth or rotational position. And we included the math with that. Highlighted in pink is the two byte is the two bytes uh, distance of the laser. Highlighted in blue is the one byte reflectivity or intensity. Underline is the 32 bytes times the two byte distance and one byte reflectivity. There's 32 bytes in pairs of three with this data, as you see highlighted in the pink and blue. This stops at the hexadecimal value of FFEE, which is the start of the next data block. I would like to add for the full 1248 bytes packet, there will be 10 more data blocks or five more pairs of data blocks and six and a six byte timestamp structured just as we see here and the timestamp image is included below. This image was taken from the manufacturer's chart from a previous slide. That chart gives a more specific breakdown of the status or timestamp than the chart used for our specific device. This shows our final and the hardest steps of the project. This is the math behind the geodetic azimuth angle calculation. We cannot do this precisely unless we understand how to translate the distance and reflectivity data points talked in the slide ab ab above. With the information, we will be able to create a Pythonic program to visualize it in 3D. Now, I'll hand it over to Elijah. So, our theory is to replay the packets and a standard network on how we believe this could be implemented is a LiDAR connected to a basic computer or any visualization software. Uh, our plan of attack would be to implement, like Rick said, a man in the middle attack where we sit between the two devices and capture the UDB packets, break these packets down, and then inject our own data to get any be behavior that we see beneficial to our demands. So our goals overall are to create a Python script to, to process and dump this hex data, parse the data blocks into the respective unsigned integers, calculate the algorithm to further separate these data blocks and how they would be implemented or visualized with the 3D software, modify the angle data in the data block to display the malicious point cloud, and then finally encode the modified data. I would also like to add that is exactly how we look while working on the LiDAR devices. So our overall concern is, can we get these devices or the end visualization software to feedback wrong information to vehicles such as ground, airborne, and maybe even one day space? So a few issues we ran into during this project that we believe would be detrimental to better research would be to get descriptions of the environments uh, where these lighters would be sent, uh, whether it be cities, deserts, uh, oceans, what have you, um, and then their actual final implemented software. If the who it's developed by uh, and how long and how they handle their software lifecycle. If they're a company known for bad life cycles, you may have a lot more issues. Thank you for attending our presentation. You can find our DEF CON 27 presentation and previous research on YouTube titled Elijah Roberts, Tell Me Lies, Automotive LiDAR and Low Tech, DEF CON 27 Car Hacking Village. We will be on Discord if anyone has any questions or would like to discuss anything cybersecurity. We would be interested to hear about your research or projects as well. Thank you.